Okay. For the assignment, we are going to be doing a poster. <coughs> now this poster is going to be on 11 by 17 paper. So when we set up InDesign, a new, new document, since it's 11 by 17, what's another name for 11 by 17? Do you know? It's tabloid. So tabloid size paper and 11 by 17 are the same thing. So we'll take tabloid. Uh, since it's a poster, we're doing a single page. We can turn off facing pages or leave it on. doesn't matter. I'm going to turn it off. Orientation. You can do landscape or portrait. Choose whichever. But the big thing you got need to do here is since we're going to do bleeds, make sure you make it visible. And then on your bleeds, I suggest entering 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. Now, what is this going to do for you? Well, when I say OK here, I want you to notice here, you've got this inner line here, which is our normal margin. Then we have the white edge, which is the edge of the paper. But you'll notice that we have a red edge that is slightly larger than the paper. This is the bleed edge. So when we're putting our pieces on here, we can, if we do it here, we're just going to do it to the text margin. Now, there is nothing magical about that text margin location. You can set it to whatever your design wants to be. The default's a half inch. Um, quite often, I'll be honest, I just ignore it and I put my own guidelines in there and I just do whatever I want because I generally forget to adjust that margin before I get started. If I do right here to the edge of the paper, that would seem like that would produce a full bleed. But um, can you guarantee that you're going to cut it exactly on the edge, on the, on the edge, right on the spot? No. So what we want to do and since we can't print to the outside edge anyway, we're going to have to print to a larger paper, is we will take it out to the edge of the bleed. Now, I have an eighth of an inch of space in which I can trim the paper. So when I print it, it's going to print clear out to here, and then I can trim it on the actual size. Okay, so you, we go through and... We uh, lay out our design. Um, we're done. It's good. We think it's fantastic. And we want to produce this in millions of copies because it's going to sell. Well, this one probably won't. Um, or it's your assignment and it's due. We're going to go to File, Export, just like we've always done. Give it a name. Now here's where it gets a little bit different. First off, let's go ahead and we'll go through the, some of these settings because I haven't really talked about them. Uh, pages all, or you can do a page range. In this case, we only have one page, makes no difference. But like the color manipulation one, if you wanted to do just the last two pages, you could have just clicked here and chose those pages and then just entered them. Pages are spreads. Pages will be individual sheets. Spreads will be, if you've got, say we're doing two and a half by 11s and they're side by side, it will print it out as an 11 by 17. This is where he was talking about making sure that you do not send down as spreads, you do as individual pages. Um, depending upon the assignment, you'll switch between the two for what you're wanting to do. In this case, pages. Then we're going to come over here to marks and bleeds. Come down to bleed and slug and say use document bleed settings. You set them up to begin with, just use them. If you don't, you have to enter them manually. So you might as well just use the ones you set it up with to begin with. Next, you need to turn on crop marks. Now you can turn on the bleed marks if you want. It's just going to make the page a little bit larger. But at minimum, what they need to see is the crop marks. This tells where to cut the paper. This also, by turning these on, tells Adobe, when it creates the PDF,
to make one that's larger than the page size. I'll choose export and it should be sitting here on the desktop and we pull it up. If you look here on the PDF that it generated, you will see these little lines here up in the corner. They're on all the corners. These are the cut lines, the crop lines. If I had turned on the bleed lines, you would see a second set out here that would have lined up with these edges. So they're really not essential for this purpose. Um, if we go down to the bottom, and you'll see them down the other corner where we've got the same marks. So you take this, you print it, you're going to print it on, will you print this on 11 by 17 paper? No, you're going to print it on something bigger. It might be a 12 by 18 or some size in between, okay? If, uh, I don't think they stock at like an 11 and a half by 17 and a half, so you probably will end up printing this on a 12 by 18 sheet. And then you'll take it over and line these edges up here with the cutter and zip, and you've cut it down. Now this is great. We have produced one here for print. But say we're also producing this so that it's going to go to print and it's going to go to digital also. We're uploading onto the internet. Let's go back to InDesign. I'm going to make a small change. I want you to see the difference. This will also be the difference if you do it wrong. We'll go File, Export again. I'm going to call this one Test 2. And this time, I'm not going to turn on the marks and bleeds. I'm going to leave them off. Everything else is the same. So this is the way we've always been doing it. Export it. And somewhere around here. It's test two. And you will notice that it trimmed it right at the page size. So if you are doing this, you've set up the bleeds and you produce the PDF and you don't see crop marks and you see it edged like this, you know that you need to go back in and export it with the crop marks.